Welcome to Care Coordination and Interoperable Health IT Systems Policy and Interoperable Health IT Lecture A. This unit will cover the following learning objectives. 1. List and discuss the impact of key health interoperability related topics in healthcare legislation. 2. Identify and discuss how the Meaningful Use Program and the ONC Certification Programs have impacted interoperable health IT. And 3. Assess and leverage Meaningful Use, ONC Certification, and other health IT policy activities to facilitate interoperability. This lecture will give an overview of federal policies that affect health interoperability. Let's talk about regulated health IT, where congressional acts and federal regulations have made and continue to make a huge impact on the expansion and shape of health IT and healthcare interoperability. This is because health IT is seen as a requisite for improving the quality and reducing the cost of health care. A key report that was often quoted and affected policy was done by the RAND organization in 2006. This report said that annual savings from health IT efficiency alone could be $77 billion or more. It also said that the government should act now to overcome obstacles and realize these benefits. This report was a call to action. Let's take a step back for a quick lesson on the U.S. government since we are about to talk about legislations and regulations. The first thing to point out is that legislation is created by the legislative branch of the U.S. government and the legislature is Congress. Regulations, on the other hand, are created by the executive branch of the government. Regulations are rules to carry out or to execute, laws or legislation. When an idea for a law is first proposed, it is called a bill, and then when it is approved, it is called an act, a law, or a statute. The purpose of legislation is to set policy. So when you read a congressional act, it often does not have all the details that would be needed to implement it. A congressional act is more of a high-level document that often says that regulations need to be created, and it authorizes these different regulations. The Act is published in the United States Code, and Congress is the one that creates, votes on, and approves these Acts. They are then signed by the President. The Executive Branch is responsible for creating regulations that implement and execute Congressional Acts. This starts out with a proposed regulation, which is called an NPRM, or National Proposed Rulemaking. When the proposed rulemaking is finalized, it becomes a regulation or a rule, and its purpose is not to set policy, but to execute policy. The regulation is published in the Federal Register and is authorized by a Congressional Act. Although this unit focuses on federal policy, note that state and local governments have similar structures, and that state and local governments also have acts and rules that impact health IT. Let's look at some health IT-related congressional acts. Have you heard of HIPAA? It stands for the Health Insurance and Portability Act. It was originally published in 1996. What about ARA, or the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act? It was published in 2009. How about PPACA, or the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act? It was published in 2010. What about MACRA? or the Medicare Access and CHIP Reauthorization Act. It was published in 2015. These are famous congressional acts for health IT because each one of them has left a very large footprint on the health IT landscape. But there are many more bills related to health interoperability. Some examples are the telehealth bill that was proposed in 2015, the trust IT bill that was proposed in 2016, and the 21st Century Cures Bill that was proposed in 2015. All of these bills, which may or may not become acts, have health IT implications. Let's talk about the 21st Century Cures Bill in more detail. The purpose of the bill is to make finding cures for disease faster. If you want to accelerate the discovery of cures, 
you are going to need information. That information must be communicated and aggregated, which means you are going to need interoperable health IT. The bill talks about how interoperability is important and an enabling requirement for carrying out its goals. It also recognized that to cure diseases, we have to care for people where they are. So telehealth is identified in the bill as an important way of doing that. We talked about health IT acts, so now let's talk about some famous regulations that help carry out those acts. For example, a regulation published in 2000 was the Insurance Reform, Standards for Electronic Transactions. This was actually a regulation that was published due to the Authorizing Act of HIPAA. This HIPAA regulation has to do with electronic exchange of clients' information, which is an important part of the HIPAA rule. This regulation requires standards for sending claims electronically from a provider to CMS. Another regulation is the 2015 Medicare Physician Fees Schedule Final Rule. This regulation was actually authorized by the Social Security Act. But you might wonder how it relates to health care interoperability. Well, this regulation includes the requirement that quality measures from electronic health records must be electronically transmitted to CMS using standard formats. In addition to legislation and regulations, there are also important groups in Washington, D.C. that inform the government, and they are often asked to publish reports. Their reports help set direction and inform a lot of policy that is drafted, created, and approved. Some key direction-setting reports that have spurred and set the road ahead of us for health interoperability are the following. The first is called, quote, Better Health Care and Lower Costs. Accelerating Improvement Through Systems Engineering, end quote. This report was called the, quote, PCAST report, end quote, and was done by an expert committee. It helps specify how interoperability is such an important part of delivering better health care and lowering costs. Another really important report was done by AHRQ. That also, again, informed the government. It is often called the Jason Report and it was done by a special advisory group. Their report was called, quote, Robust Health Data Infrastructure, end quote. A third report is called, quote, Connecting Health and Care for the Nation, a 10-year vision to achieve an interoperable health IT infrastructure, end quote. That was published by the Office of the National Coordinator for Health Information Technology in 2015. Following that report, ONC published another report in October 2015, which carried out this vision from an interoperability perspective, and it was called, quote, Connecting Health Care and Care for the Nation, a Shared Nationwide Interoperability Roadmap, end quote. It described how we get from where we were at the time of that roadmap being created in 2015 to 2024, where an envisioned health care interoperability across the United States that supported a learning health system. There have also been annual reports published in which ONC puts together the best available health IT standards for interoperability and publishes them as an advisory report, signaling to vendors, providers, and innovators that these are the standards to focus on and use. There are also other U.S. government-related interoperability efforts. For example, the National Institute of Standards and Technology is involved in health IT. What they do is create test scripts and tools to be able to carry out the certification of interoperability functions that are part of the ONC certification program for health IT. The ONC Systems Interoperability Framework, which is often called the S&I Framework, is a group that volunteers on ONC's facilitated standards, fostering committees. These committees serve as catalysts for standards development and as a conduit between different standards groups. They select standards, identify gaps, and foster development of standards and implementation guides to support the interoperability goals that we have in the United States for health IT. And then there is interoperability work being done for the federal organizations that use health IT, such as the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, 
the Centers for Disease Control, the Federal Drug Administration, or the Department of Defense. ONC also has Health Information Exchange Grant opportunities and Trust and Governance Policy Advisories that they have published. These are just some examples of how the government also gets involved with interoperability. Now let us focus on one particular legislation that has had a tremendous impact on health interoperability. That legislation is the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, also called ARA. This particular act was also called the Stimulus Bill because it was designed to stimulate the economy. It included an entire section, which at one point had been a bill on its own, called High Tech, as an abbreviation for Health Information Technology. This section discussed the fact that we should have a program to encourage EHR adoption, that we should incentivize the adoption of an EHR, and do numerous activities to encourage health IT implementation and adoption. This program for the adoption of EHRs and encouragement of health IT implementation and adoption is called the EHR Incentive Program, or more commonly known as the Meaningful Use Program, or MU. The Meaningful Use Program has greatly improved health interoperability. This program provided incentive payments totaling over $35 billion since its start. The goal of the program was not only the adoption of EHRs, but also the meaningful use of EHRs. This act and its subsequent regulations are covered in depth in other components, but in this component, we will focus on its relevance to interoperability. Looking back at the Meaningful Use Program, you will see that this act actually authorized a series of regulations related to certification of health IT and the meaningful use of health IT. The first regulations defined Meaningful Use Stage 1 and ONC 2011 standards and certified technology. Then the next series of regulations defined Meaningful Use Stage 2 and ONC 2014 certified technology. Then the next series of regulations defined Meaningful Use Stage 3 and ONC 2015 certified technology. This particular program is meant to be a three-stage program, so that is where it ends. However, it does not mean that you stop meaningfully using health IT, but rather you continue having these functionalities in your systems. There are three main components of the Meaningful Use program. One, the use of certified EHRs in a meaningful manner. Two, use of certified EHR technology for electronic exchange of health information to improve the quality of health care. And three, use of certified EHR technology to submit clinical quality measures selected by the Secretary of Health and Human Services. So what is the impact of interoperability because of meaningful use? Well, because of meaningful use, EHRs are being used in many hospitals and doctor's offices across the country. For example, according to ONC, 96% of hospitals used certified EHRs in 2015, compared to only 9% in 2009. These EHRs are certified to have a standards-based interoperability functionality. Providers and doctors that want to meet meaningful use are required to attest to the use of the interoperability functionality. There is a continuum of interoperability, from barely interoperable to fully interoperable. One could say that meaningful use moved the nation forward on the continuum. However, being fully interoperable will require much more. And this is why the ONC Interoperability Roadmap was created. The more recent MACRA law specifically calls out a government priority to achieve widespread healthcare interoperability by the end of 2018. To that end, it includes a new meaningful use requirement that all meaningful users of health IT must attest that they are not getting in the way of this goal by willfully blocking the sharing of information. The regulation, Merit-Based Incentive Payment System, or MIPS, executes the MACRA law. This concludes Lecture A of Policy and Interoperable Health IT. To summarize, 
congressional acts, and federal regulations have made and continue to make a huge impact on the expansion and shape of health IT and healthcare interoperability. In addition, there have been recent Sentinel reports that have set the direction for interoperability. A significant act for interoperability is the High Tech Act and its Meaningful Use Program.